Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to ask the uh, three patients, I consider patients um, as well as um, your testimony, and I apologize for having to leave for a few minutes. I'm very well aware of your, your testimony. But what is your assessment of the claims appeal process in which you have participated and succeeded as well as the ongoing status of disability approval for the rest of the Camp Lejeune veterans? Let me start with Mr. Partey. Well, as a dependent child of a Marine officer, I do not qualify for VA care, nor have I made a claim in the VA because of that. Um, my care was given to me through my private insurance I have with my employer, and even with that, it put my family to the brink of bankruptcy. Um, I've talked to Mr. Devereaux and some of the other veterans who've gone through the VA process, and it's been nothing for more, uh, nothing short of a nightmare from what I understand. Uh, a lot of these people uh, that do put the claims in are denied. Many of them give up and walk away thinking that there's no way they can prove this. Uh, they're frustrated by their medical doctors um, not, you know, not being able to provide a nexus letter because of, of, for lack of a better word, fear that they'll be ridiculed in the professional community. Mr. Devereaux. Yeah, I want to just say not only is it personally devastating to be diagnosed with something like this, and then you feel like um, you have to beg, you know, for something like you have to prove that you're right. You know, it was really um, not only um, am I physically challenged now, um, of course, financially, it affected my family tremendous. We made unbelievable changes. So it was very difficult to go through this um, process. And I really hope that they can <coughs> speed up the process for people. There's a lot of people in my situation that unfortunately don't have a lot of time to live and um, based on the past results, you know, so it, it would be nice if they could really expedite the process for a lot of people. And I, I commend them for at least allowing me benefits and few other people I hope they can continue this type of action in a more speedy process. Mr. Waters. Uh, my experience with the <clears throat> VA claims process was that the denials I got apparently came from people who were extremely inexperienced. There were lots of errors, lots of mistakes in the written reason for the denials. And it was only when I was able to talk with a decision, uh, decision review officer who's a senior person who has much more experience that I was able to get the message across. The other thing is, I, I, as I mentioned, I had resources available to me in the medical school that most veterans don't have. Had I not had those, my, my, I would still be uh, fighting uh, with the Veterans Administration on my claim. Um, I think the speed of the process or, or the slowness of the process is a major issue. And uh, as Mr. Partain knows, I had reached a level of frustration, uh, and, I, and I even stated this in writing, I was planning on going down to the VA office in Waco. <clears throat> I was going to publicly announce a hunger strike. I was going to stop all of my cancer medications in order to try to speed the process and get someone at the VA, the regional office in Waco, to listen to what I had to say. Thank you, sir. Um, certainly, as one who believes very strongly in fulfilling the government's promise to veterans and their families, I'm very eager to, to um, pursue this further with all of y'all because I believe very firmly that the VA needs to take care of, of our veterans once they have left the military and their families also. It's a sacred duty that we that we have. Uh, Dr. Clapp, do you, you suggest that the Department of Veterans Affairs determine a presumption classification for veterans exposed while they were residents at, um, at Camp Lejeune, similar to the legislation that established the classification for Agent Orange? What is the difference in the scientific knowledge between these cases and how many veterans made claims to the VA for diseases revolt, resulting from exposure to Agent Orange before Congress passed that legislation? Two very complicated questions. Um, the state of the knowledge. You got 16 seconds. Yeah, right. that's your two. <laughs> I would say the state of the knowledge is comparable, actually. When we started out with the Agent Orange Act in 1991, there was quite a bit of published literature by then, including some of my own. 
Um, and then how many claims have been filed by uh, Agent Orange exposed? I don't have that off the top of my head. The VA certainly can tell you that. Okay, thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, my time's expired. I'll you back.